So today, I'm standing in a tunnel, as you do, on a purpose-built criterium track called the Girroween Sporting Complex in Noosa, Queensland, Australia. We're on this criterium track today with a GoPro on my bike and power and heart rate data overlaid for you. I'm gonna demonstrate what not to do in lap number one, i.e. the biggest mistakes cyclists make in training, and what to do in lap number two if you wanna start a pathway to getting faster, stronger, and of course, smarter, on your road bike. You could be looking to beat your mates around the block, you're targeting a Fondo event, or maybe you just want self-improvement and you're not overly sure where to start. And that starting point is what we're gonna segue into today, which is essentially base training. And I like to think of base training like building a house. You've gotta start with the foundations, which in cycling fitness terms is base aerobic fitness. And I'm sure you've heard of this base aerobic fitness before, but because of human nature, which drives the number one mistake cyclists make in training. I am very confident that base training gets overshadowed, overlooked, and not respected. So in this video today, I'm gonna to show you how to train base fitness properly, but first up, bringing the number one mistake cyclists make in training to life. Now quickly, for those of you with a keen eye, you might recall, this is actually a remake of one of my most popular videos of all time on my personal YouTube channel, Cam Nichols, published in March 2019. The difference between now and then though is I'm now a road cycling coach. I have been for two and a half years. And it turns out that despite the wisdom that I've gained over the past two and a half years of being a road cycling coach, I actually got the number one mistake cyclists make with training right way back in March 2019. However, in this video, I'm gonna have a lot more meat on the bone to share with you. So, let's get into it. So to set the tone for this video today, as I'm warming up around the Criterium track, I'd like to really delve into power training zones with you here, as these zones provide you with a clear understanding of what power you need to produce on the bike to train different physiological systems. I like to think of power zones as the weight rack at a gym. You know what you need to lift to train power, strength, speed, or endurance. Same applies with your cycling power zones. Yes, you can use heart rate training zones, and I'm a big believer in heart rate complementing your power training, but would you go to the gym and blindly lift weights and just look at your heart rate after each set when you have the option to know what you're lifting? Of course not. So power gives us that immediate and tangible number we can leverage to target our training zones more effectively. Now, how do you work out your training zones? Well, the simplest way is to complete a functional threshold power test or FTP test. We use the Half Monty on Wahoo system here at the RCA for those that have a trainer or the 20 minute test outside. Once you have your FTP, you can put your number into a calculator like this one here, which I'll link to below. And I'm gonna enter my FTP, because I'm the example today, of 350 watts. Outspits my training zones, so I have a rough guide for how to train recovery, endurance, advanced endurance, lactate threshold, VO2 max, or your aerobic ceiling, anaerobic capacity, and my neuromuscular all-out sprint system. I'm also gonna put in my max heart rate here, which many people do, so we can make some comparisons as we go around the track. What you might find interesting to note here is my heart rate zones stop at zone five. Because beyond that zone, heart rate is simply too slow to respond to be able to effectively train zone six, your anaerobic capacity zone, using heart rate. And I could make that argument as well for the zone below it, zone five, VO2 max, unlike power, which is immediate and effective. So let's get in to lap number one, AKA what not to do, the biggest mistake cyclists make. And the first thing I'm doing here is you can see me going out of the blocks way too hard in my hour power threshold zone, zone four. Although you can see my heart rate zone is lagging in zone three. And I do this because I'm focused on speed and the momentum of the bike. Coming up a hill just prior, I've lost that momentum and I want it back. Now we're approaching a descent. I'm gonna take my foot off the pedals and do nothing. Straight into zone 
zero, I guess, zero watts. And as you can see, once again, heart rate is lagging in my zone two, but ultimately I'm enjoying the downhill and going over 40 kilometers per hour without any effort whatsoever. And once we get onto the flat ground, I'm just gonna take my time before applying the pressure because the speed of the bike is pretty good. But as I lose more momentum, I start applying some pressure and we're now headed towards zone two, which is the aerobic base building zone we're gonna discuss shortly. The speed is pretty good here too, as right now, on a fairly windy day, I've got myself a slight tailwind, but as we turn the next corner, I start to feel the momentum of the bike reduce because I'm now presented with a cross headwind, and as a result, I'm gonna lift the pressure. I'm gonna lift it into my zone three, which is a very common zone road cycle, spend a fair amount of time in, and here we have parity in power zones and heart rate zones, which is nice to see, but I'm approaching a sharp incline here, and what happens when most cyclists hit a hill incline, they attack it. And as I get into the groove on the pinch, I've basically hit my zone six anaerobic capacity. Although once again, heart rate is lagging and slow to respond. But my aim here is to push it up the hill because it's a hill and that's what you do when you get to a hill. But the effort has now fatigued me, so I've dropped back into my zone one here despite the fact I'm presented with a true headwind here. And typically I'd wanna drive it, but I'm a little cooked after the hill. So what's happened here? Three big things. Number one, I've been dictated by the terrain, also by the environment, i.e. the wind conditions, and how I was feeling on the day, because I was feeling pretty good. And that, my friends, leads to riding all over the place most of the time, and that innate desire to push it up a hill, drive it into a headwind. And we haven't even talked about that rider that's sort of dangling up the road like a carrot. You want to try and chase him down, or that Strava segment you just happened to be in. All that combined... That leads to the number one mistake cyclists make in training, and that is they ride too hard too often. And if you ride too hard too often, there are three major negative impacts that that will have on your training and your overall cycling performance, which are number one, aerobic base fitness adaptations are neglected, which we're going to focus on today. Number two, fitness adaptations from intense training are crushed. And number three, a fatigued state means hard rides can never truly be hard. Now, we can't deep dive on all those three areas today because we just don't have enough time for a YouTube video, but we are going to focus on area number one being base fitness aerobic adaptation. So let's go back into the video, lap number two. So for my zone two power, I like to target around 230 watts, which for me is around 65% of my FTP. And I say to most amateur and recreational road cyclists that haven't trained to structure before, they haven't done a lot of zone two training, let's aim for 65, even 70% of FTP. It's at the top end of your zone two, because if you haven't trained this way before, if you go to the bottom end of zone two, it's probably gonna feel like you're not doing much. And if you start to feel that way, it gets in your head and you're less likely to stick with it. So go 65 to 70% of FTP, at least in the initial periods of your zone two training. Let's get back into it. Now my heart rate is sitting outside of that zone two area, but I know it's hot and humid today, and my heart rate is gonna sit higher than normal as a result. And because I have power, I will follow that number unless, of course, I see my heart rate trending way higher or lower. Coming into the descent, you will notice that I keep pedaling. I increase my cadence by five to 10 RPMs to mitigate the need for further gear changes. And yes, the power will typically drop a little as you go downwards, but I'm still applying pressure in zone two and I'm still working that aerobic system. I haven't backed off and done nothing as many do down a hill. Coming into the flat part of the course, the pressure remains constant despite the swirly wind conditions. I don't let the wind dictate how much pressure I apply through the pedals. I'm sticking with 230 watts as closely as I can and even when I turn the next corner and I'm struck with a cross headwind, I'm just going to let the bike slow down. I don't care about speed for this training session. A focus on speed is not for this session, it's for another day. Now the tricky part with zone two training is uphill. So what I say to people is just slow the cadence down rather than changing five to six gears. I've changed my gears down a couple of times, but I'm also slowing down the cadence, right down to 60 to 70 RPMs. This slow cadence work at a lower output is actually good for your bike handling skills, and it also allows us to tap into the muscular system during our zone two workout. Of course, you may need to get out of the saddle as I have done here, and you may even hit your bottom end zone four threshold power when doing so, but provided it's controlled and you're not overextending yourself, 
you're not going to get a significant rise out of the lactate system and start derailing the aerobic adaptations we're looking for here. So let's summarize. Lap number one, I was all over the place. We hit our do nothing free pedaling zone. Zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four, zone six, all within one lap. Lap two, I was targeting a specific outcome. Zone two training, i.e. aerobic fitness adaptations. We hit zone two for over 90% of the time with a little bit of bottom end zone four to help us up the major incline. So the key takeaways for you after watching this video should be, start thinking about how you can leverage power zones to work a specific system. For example, have two rides a week where you go out and target zone two, targeting aerobic fitness adaptations and try not to deviate from it. And yes, you should still maintain the random sporadic rides that you enjoy doing, the smash fest with your friends and so forth, but don't do them all the time. Start surrounding these rides with some structured riding. Start off with some zone two riding, targeted zone two sessions. Maybe just do one a week, try two a week. And then maybe once you've figured out zone two riding, you can look at targeting some upper end zones. Maybe some threshold training to improve your hill climbing. And there's plenty of information you can find online about threshold training. So start somewhere simple with zone two and you'll be surprised where you take your cycling performance. Now, if you're looking for a little bit more after this video today, don't forget we've got a free ebook for road cyclists looking to take the next step. I'll link to that below. And of course, we've got a 12 week program called the Up Level Road Cycling Course, which is open three times a year. You can apply for our next intake. Link will be below and I'll catch you in the next video.